Tell me, soldier, where were you when Mao Levelong Creek fell in Helldivers 2? I was cowering on the other side of the galaxy, grinding my way towards spicier stratagems. Some super citizen I turned out to be. But you needn't follow in my shameful footsteps. Not with these handy Helldivers 2 tips and tricks. The whole Axis team has been religiously plummeting into battle, so I asked everyone to offer advice they'd give to newer players. Obviously, if you're already chewing through level 9 difficulty, it's really on you to protect cowards like us. But even if you have put in tens or even hundreds of hours, hopefully there's something here that'll help. And if not, why not share your best Helldivers 2 tips in the comments? Now, let's get into the tips pod and dive down to planet knowledge. Let's kick off with useful controls not covered in the tutorial. Holding the square reload button brings up a layer of extra weapon settings for each gun that you then choose with the D-pad. You can switch fire rates, scope zooms and even toggle your flashlight. Also, when aiming with L2, you can press R3 to switch between first and third person aiming, letting you decide between the tighter sense of accuracy of an FPS or the better sense of your surroundings from the wider third person camera. You can actually tell the game to memorize your aiming preferences. Head to the gameplay tab in options and you can switch on remember aim mode. Setting this to per weapon recalls your last used mode for each specific gun, while opting for global applies your last used aiming mode to every gun. Back in the game, you're able to ping locations with a tap of R1, but if you hold R1, you can give more in-depth instructions. Great if you don't like voice comms, but don't want to be the creepy silent rando in a matchmaking group. Also, it may seem silly pinging a giant enemy on the battlefield who can miss them, but it does mark them for any teammates dropping back into the battlefield, making it easier for them to steer their drop pod for maximum damage. You can also use the touchpad to bring up the tactical map and guide your cursor around it. Pressing X then lets you place a precision marker if you want to direct people towards a second objective, say. With those extra button functions under your belt, let's whip through some equipment pointers. We'll start with stims. These pick-me-ups obviously keep you alive, but they can keep friends alive as well. Approach a comrade who's low on health and you'll see a button cue to use a stim on them. Selfishly hoarding stims is also valid as they have hidden benefits. Stims actually heal you continuously for a short period of time, so taking one preemptively if you know you're about to take serious damage can counter the worst excess of what the game throws at you. Better still, stims refill your stamina gauge, so using one when you're flagging as you leg it away from bug swarms could mean the difference between life and death. Sticking with helpful equipment, definitely consider including a supply pack stratagem in your loadout. This ammo-filled backpack lets you give ammo to teammates, but it's not as altruistic as it first seems. You can restock your own ammo by tapping down on the D-pad. Even better, if you see the pack's ammo slots looking empty, you can drop a resupply and approach it to fill the supply pack back up. Don't just leave excess ammo littering the battlefield. Before you enter a mission, there are a couple of things to check. Weather impacts the action in subtle ways. Cold planets slow down the fire rate of standard weapons, but usefully slow overheating on energy weapons. On the flip side, hot planets speed up energy weapon heating and also drain your stamina quicker, so press R2 to check the effects menu to prepare your loadout for the next task. Next up, using the landing screen to plan your route through the mission. Red blips mark enemy placements and you can see your objective and a side objective, so start planning your optimal route between those lovely objectives and those horrible enemy encounters. Oh, and make sure at the outset of missions you are equipping boosters. They go in this slot and are team wide stat buffs. You unlock boosters using medals in the War Bonds screen. And don't worry, they aren't single use. Once you've unlocked them, don't be scared to use them. Let's talk about fun things awaiting you on the planet's surface. If you accept a mission to terminate an illegal broadcast, it can be completed by blowing up the location with a stratagem. Why hack the terminal when you can deactivate it with fire? Also, if you spot a satellite tower objective on your map, make that your next priority, as once you've realigned and unlocked it, it shows all the points on the map to visit to find samples and loot. 
While radar towers don't appear on every map, there is a cool trick for discovering those you can't see in plain sight. If you look on the tactical map, you can identify telltale building formations and then ping the map with X. If this is a radar station, you'll see the symbol added to the game compass. You'll also find this mighty artillery on some maps, well worth taking the time to investigate as you can load them up with nearby shells, link to the terminal and then unlock the cannon as an additional stratagem. Brilliantly, what shells you load in and what order you load it up changes what it fires. Use yellow shells if you can, as they are brutal nukes. Though turning the planet into an acre of barbecue is good as well. Lastly, keep an eye out for these glowing beacons, as they mark emergency supply drops that can contain those valuable medals or super currency. And if you ever spot one of these shipping container doors, a quick grenade will crack open a storage unit and free the goodies within. If we gave you just one tip about Helldivers 2, we'd plead with you to complete the objective before you go exploring. This way, you'll bank the basic experience for a mission's success even if you die before extracting from the planet. As for how you spend that remaining mission time, it's about striking a balance. While you can push the clock trying to find every side activity and sample, more on them in a moment, the larger XP reward for completing the mission means it's smarter to do a broad sweep, extract and leap into a new mission. Nailing two missions in 30 minutes will reward you more than one mission dragged out to half an hour. A lot of exploring time revolves around collecting samples, which are used to upgrade your ship and improve the potency of your equipment. Samples appear around points of interest, but be aware that you do drop them on death. If anyone dies, make sure to loot their goodies. To be extra safe, you can drop samples near the extraction point for safekeeping. Just hold down on the D-pad and select the samples. Just remember to grab them before you extract. Oh, and once you're back to the ship, remember to actually use the samples to buy upgrades in the ship management screen. The lure of making the next drop is powerful enough to forget why you're collecting all these random alien parts. There are many ways to subtly improve your odds of survival. For starters, make the minimap your best friend. It will ping with red dots, which give you a good sense of where the next wave of bugs or bots are swarming from. Very helpful for extending life expectancy during dramatic sieges. Before the action kicks off, you'll often see groups of unalerted enemies. If you can, you want to kill them all quickly before they trigger an alert which spawns dangerous groups. Throwing a stratagem with a big area of effect can stop an entire battle breaking out in one simple move. They have democracy! Speaking of which, don't be overprotective of stratagems. You'll likely start out wanting to keep them for a rainy day when you desperately need them, but they actually have generous cooldowns that will comfortably cycle throughout a mission, so get used to chucking them about and making your life easier. Better that than risk your actually finite reinforcements. If you would rather a softly, softly approach, Helldivers 2 supports basic stealth. Enemies detect you by line of sight, but their range radically decreases if you go prone and crawl on by. You can decrease that range further by using war bonds to unlock armor with the scout passive. Obviously, this only benefits sneaky parties. Once it kicks off, stealth is not viable. When hell does break loose, make it your priority to hunker down behind rocks. Yes, that sounds cowardly, but breaking line of sight keeps you relatively bullet and acid free, and lobbing stratagem markers over the top or targeting enemies as they come round corners will dramatically increase your odds of survival. If you do have to run, equipping a sidearm lets you press R2 to shoot behind you while running forward, thinning the horde as you outrun it. Of course, it's better to stop waves reaching you in the first place. In the early game, we recommend the Eagle Cluster Bomb or Eagle Strafing Run. The blanketing effect means you can be pretty loose with the aim, though we do suggest throwing it ahead of the swarm so that they run into it after the few seconds it takes to trigger. Speaking of death from the skies, let's cool down a couple of stratagem pointers. Perhaps the most obvious is to call in support gear stratagems, your better weapons, supply packs, etc. When you start a mission, get yourself nice and readied up before all the crying and the screaming and the rocking gently in the corner. 
We also love sentry guns, especially once we learned to place them on elevated surfaces. It lowers the risk of friendly fire at waist height and lets them puke bullets into bug armies. You could also jump on the turret to avoid its swinging spray. Just try not to be sick. Finally, if you can, try holding off buying loads of new stratagems until you hit level 5. At this rank, you get much better versions of existing gadgets, such as replacing the machine gun sentry with the beautifully spiteful Gatling sentry. By not buying those earlier toys, you will have the funds ready to purchase even shinier gizmos at level 5. Patience always pays off. And those are just some of the Helldivers 2 tips that are keeping us alive as we crawl up through the lower ranks. The beauty of Arrowhead's anarchic action is that it has so many hidden systems and quirks waiting to be mastered and exploited. So please do share your top tips, tricks and life hacks in the comments below. If you found even one tip in this video useful, we would appreciate a like. And do subscribe to PlayStation Access for plenty more to come on Helldivers 2. Station.